All right, good morning, everyone. It's Friday morning, and sorry for the glare, but I have my, my light on in here. But I was looking at garage, it's Friday morning, and I wanted to find some garage sales. And there's one that's pretty close by, and it looks like there may be some uranium glass over there. So I have my UV light, right? It works, right? Yeah, it works. Uh, we're gonna take that over there. It's right down the street. We'll go check it out. They open at 9 a.m. It is 8.50 a.m. It's gonna be a nice day today. And let's go check it out. All right, we're here at the garage sale. It's mostly kid stuff, but it did have in that one picture um, looks like uranium glass, so let's go find out. Good morning. What'd you say? I have no idea what this was. Alright, well I'm gonna guess that it's a full because I would have used it otherwise. All right, so they they asked five bucks for it. I did not try to get any less. I was like, yeah, I'll definitely take it. So uh, let's go do some experiments with this just to make sure that it is what it is. It does have some kind of a maker's mark there at the bottom or whatever that's called, little F with a shield. It's a glass, a cup and a saucer. Very interesting. All right, we're back at the shop here, here on my edge sander. I have our uranium glass, um, and I have a black light here, ultraviolet light, actually. Look at that. That is awesome. So the F with the shield on both the cup and the saucer Uh, that means that this stuff is made by federal glass and it is uranium glass, which means that during the production of this, they actually use like uranium powder or something like that. I'm not exactly sure, but they use that in the production of the glass, which makes it glow like this. Now, when you have um, glass and this color, Let's take it into the light. So when you have glass, like this yellowish, greenish color, they actually call it Vaseline glass. And it was produced only um, in the 1930s, 40s, pretty much after that they stopped making it. Mostly during World War II, um, the more rare they are, the more valuable they are. And this one here isn't too rare. You can get like a set of six of them even, but they are pretty valuable. So I paid five bucks, made a couple bucks. I'm not gonna sell it, but I'm probably gonna, actually I'm gonna put this over here near my new collection of radioactive materials. Here I have, uh, these are radioactive minerals. Wax on, wax off. This is the that new finish stuff. So my, um, the car wash I normally go to, they switched owners and they're charging like double now. So I was like, you know what? I'll just go ahead and uh, do it myself. I have a pressure washer and I could do a better job by hand and I can take pride in my own work instead of just rolling through a automatic one. So uh, yeah, I don't have to pay that anymore and I'll have something of higher quality anyway. Perfect. Uh, we're waiting for the electrician. He said he's on his way. He's gonna be here all day today, and he'll be here probably all day tomorrow, and possibly the next day as well. So um, I do have to go out to the river. I have to, uh, that's why those buckets are there. I have to go out to the river, and I have to get some more uh, buckets of rocks, and I also have to get buckets of dirt. So it'll be great, because I'll basically be going to the river and bringing home everything, but I'm still gonna classify at the river. So um, yeah, I need rocks for the front yard, those two patches and then we need dirt for pay dirt so that's the plan for today and uh of course the uranium glass was an awesome little find there i might actually put that on my main channel i don't know that's kind of a treasure hunt right there so that'll probably go to the clash channel 
All right, finish this up and uh, see what else we end up doing today. All right, so I was just working in here in the shot in the, the studio, editing some videos, and I come out, and it's starting to look like we're gonna have power reels soon. I am happy. All right, the electrician's on lunch break, and here is where we're at. He left his tool belt and stuff. He'll be right back. Um, but basically, we're gonna have an outlet right here for the sander. I'm going to be putting the sander right about here. This outlet is gonna be hardwired. The bandsaw is gonna be hardwired right there. Dust collector is gonna be hardwired right there. And the air compressor is gonna be hardwired right there. So when I build my wall, it'll be easy to just notch out for that. Um, for the uh, mean green machine here, my sander, this is going to be, um, it's gonna have, it's gonna be hardwired in and it's gonna be hanging, right? There's gonna be a lot of extra cord that I can wrap up and put on a hook up there. So if and when I need to move this around, then I can move it pretty much anywhere I want to. Uh, for the joiner, even though I already have a 120 here, he's gonna give me another one hanging down here. Uh, 120 for the joiner. 240 coming down from the ceiling right here. And that is pretty much all the electric I'm gonna need. Um, other than that, I have my little planer, I have my belt, my small belt sander, and I have a drill press that I still, it's the only tool I really don't have yet. So all I need is a drill press and I need this electricity in and it's coming along quickly. He, this guy's awesome. Um, I will be, uh, revealing his name and information and even a discount code uh, by the way i'm not getting a discount or anything i'm maybe i'll be able to use my own code i have no idea however if you're in the denver area and you want this guy to come out and do your shop or your house or your hot tub or whatever um i'll i'll let you guys know his name and and all that stuff so yeah, electricity. Well, yeah, another thing, um, while the electrician was here talking and explaining stuff on what he's gonna be installing and what I wanted, and you know, we both started agreeing on where things should go, instead of just talking, I was also working. Uh, I like to keep busy. Basically, I resurfaced, I didn't resurface it. I just polished it, basically. Um, I'll show you what I did. I did it to all the surfaces here. I did it to the bandsaw. I did it to the sander. I got the sander all taken care of as well. This was all full of rust. There's still some weirdness there. I don't know what that is, some kind of a stain. I'm not too worried about it. It's very nice and smooth now. WD-40, and I would just spray the surface, right? and make sure it was completely covered and let it sit for about a half hour on all of my surfaces. Then I would take this 7447 pad and very deliberately go this way. Not circles, not back and forth. I was going back and forth this way because that's the way I'll be running the, the wood through it. And then I would move it over, do the same thing here and basically just take off a very, take off any kind of funniness that was on the surface of this thing, right? The WD-40 works great for that. And then once, uh, once that was done, there's like a black slurry that's left behind. You wanna clean that off, with some denatured alcohol. So I just took this, put some on a rag. Once I cleaned that up and there was no more black uh, gunk coming up off of the surface, then I just take some of this paste wax here and just, you know, glob it on, smear it around, let it set for a little while, and then wipe it off, and that's what you got. Now, if I wanted to, uh, see, there's this thing here I don't like. I don't know what it is, but that's not that deep, and I could probably get rid of it, along with these other little marks and stuff. 
Now these scratches, they're, they're permanent, right? Um, however, these, these lighter um, imperfections, if I took some 400 grit sandpaper on a random orbital sander, sprayed it with WD-40 and then went over it, I could probably get that out and I'll probably do that in the future. I'm definitely gonna try at least. Um, but yeah, this, I, I checked for square and everything and this, this machine is perfect. So I'm really happy with this table saw. I also found out from the owner, the, the guy I bought this from, he was the third owner. So I'm the fourth owner of this machine. It was built in 1997. So, I mean, it's not that old, really. This was built when I was joining the army. So I guess it was quite a while ago. Time flies when you're having fun. Um, I think we're gonna call it there for the daily video. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you liked it, let me know in the comments as you always do. If you didn't like it, you can let me know about that as well. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great day.